Yeah. <laughs> uh, yo, what's going on? We got Big Rob from Entertainment Talk Nation. The what legend has returned to the channel. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Yeah, man. You know I had to bring you in on this one. Word. Get some some word to to your mother. That's right. I had to bring some. <laughs> Rob on some sci-fi and some matrix talking. What is going on, everybody watching right now? What is cracking? Who is here for the movie dojo army showing up? We got AJ Mation in the house. What's going on? Lone Wolf, what's going down? Jake Hall. Oh shit. John Martinez. Psych. Long. Gene, what is going down? All the badasses showing up here. We got James in the house. What's going on, brother? Rob, how have you been, my friend? Uh, I've been pretty good. I've been uh, it's pretty dead on the channel this week because I'm kind of moving on to a new machine, and I'm gonna take that opportunity to kind of reconfigure this background a little bit better. Oh, all right, all right. So I'm hoping by Friday I'll be back up and running there. Okay, copy that, copy that. But well, your otherwise, back, your yeah. background's pretty dope as it is, though. Are you, are you gonna add more to it, or are you gonna rearrange? No, it? I want to. I want to be able to see more of this ah. shelf here because I have a lot more stuff there that I can't be seen. Gotcha, gotcha. So Copy I want to kind of rearrange. Plus, I want to make my computer visible. So you see where those boxes are, like on my left shoulder there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I want to. I'm going to remove those and put my uh, my computer back there. Oh, all right. My new right. one. Yeah, because it's got like a lot of laser lights. It looks like a Pink Floyd in a box. All right. Pink Floyd concert in a box. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what is going on, everybody watching right now? It's your boy Fred Samurai guy. We're gonna talk the Matrix trilogy. Retro Leo could not make it tonight, so our movie challenge discussion, Interstellar and the Raid, uh, will be for next Tuesday. All right. So we, we have to move it to next Tuesday because uh, Leo couldn't make it tonight. We'll get. We'll I get have to ask though. You did see in the, Did you see Interstellar yet? I can't talk about it. I have to save it for uh, next Tuesday. But did you see it? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you fall that's asleep? Or, huh? Did you fall asleep or you managed? <laughs> no, I watched no. it. I'm that's not a knock. I actually like the movie. I'm just I know some people just yeah. thought it was a little bit, you know, right on the boring side. I just and don't want to spoil it now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just okay. I just figured because I know you, you get jacked up on action. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. that movie's like the exact opposite of being jacked up on <laughs> it's like somebody giving you a volume for like you know when it comes to action so yeah yeah you know, well so no you know actually samurai guy's been enjoying the slow burns recently so i've actually been getting into slow burns yeah i tried so. a recent slow burn and i felt like shooting myself <laughs> uh, what movie was it eternal it was a movie it was a tv show called invasion oh okay okay it's okay. a so it's a it's a new show on apple so i've been i've been surfing through apple's library to right start racking up some reviews i already wrote gotcha. a review on this and i'm ready to launch it as soon as i get my channel back up yeah, not that my channel's down, just until my equipment's ready. Right, and right, um, right, right. yeah, that show really made me want to take like a hammer to the ball sack. <laughs> so, was it just an alien invasion type? It's an alien movie? invasion that you, you couldn't get any more boring. Like, oh no, I can't believe I've never seen an alien invasion done so horribly on a TV show. <laughs> it's bad, but I'll 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 give the details of what my issues were. Okay, when I put the review up. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, sweet. You got a review coming to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I like that for sure. Got a couple yeah. of things coming to the channel. So, yeah. Gonna yeah. Do, uh, you don't mind if I do a little promo? Oh, now, no. Let me blow it up, brother. Hold on. All right. So, Bam. I'm going to be hopefully starting next. Well, definitely starting next week. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't been doing videos on my channel is because my computer here, 11 years in, and I love it, but it's time to move on. And it still runs great for games and stuff like that, but when I edit video and I do rendering, it really, really either slows down or completely shuts down. Um, that's because my hard drives are bad. So now that I got my new machine, I can do videos, and I'm going to be doing a new series that I think is going to be very fun because it's going to involve the viewers, and it's going to be called Is It Entertaining or Does It Suck? And this is going to be something where the viewers are going to send me either a TV show episode or two All or right. a movie where they're not sure that it's so it's so bad, they want to send it to me and say, "Is this supposed to be entertaining or does it really suck? Is it just okay. me or okay?" I think that's gonna be, and then I'm just gonna break it down and roast it if it, yeah. if it is, or that's roast be them 
for for not being more <laughs> open minded. So one thing that I've learned on my channel is yeah. everyone that views my content loves when I roast either <laughs> them or if I roast something else. So I'm going to leverage that. They love the roast. They yeah, love yeah, the roast yeah. one way or the other. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anything else going on? Uh, that's it for now. Reviews are coming. I got a bunch of reviews already pre-written and ready to record. And uh, and then the streams will return to normal, hopefully by this Friday. All right. Nice, nice. Loving the roast. Gotta love the roast now. Uh, super chat from Bo here. What's going on, man? Thanks for the super chat. Uh, first time guy, write this down. Mayor of Kingstown. Kingstown is the best show I've watched this year, bar none. No, uh, no, it's off topic, but it's, it's we'll check it out. You heard of this show, uh, Rob? I have heard of it. It's uh, starting with Jeremy Renner and Kyle Chandler. Is it Kyle Chandler? No. Is oh, it... I forget his name. Oh, I thought you were asking me. <laughs> oh, all right. So it's pretty good. Or you yeah, know I've about ne- it? I've never seen it. I know about it. I haven't seen it yet, though. Oh, okay. I think it's with Jeremy Renner, right? Oh. Is it? Is it? Is it drama, action? It, yeah, it's supposed to be like drama. It okay. looks like it's drama, so... Okay, so skip Hawkeye and just watch this. Oh, God. Yeah, Hawkeye is... <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't even start it on that shit. It didn't, it didn't get better. It's not one of those shows that got better? Or you're not, nah, you're not I, sure it's, yet because it's still going? It's just bad. <laughs> Samurai Guy hasn't watched it yet. Uh, don't, we'll don't see, we'll see if we do a review on it. Well, don't I mean, do it, you know, take, you know, you might like it, but I can tell you right now, man, Marvel's going in a direction I just can't go down that road. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. And, I'm, yeah. I'm right there with you. With the few things that I did, I thought were solid this year. Majority of it was kind of disappointing. Hopefully, Spider Man's fun. All I right, Spider Man be good. You, are you going to go yeah. see that on Thursday? Or are you waiting till the weekend? Uh, is it this Thursday? Yeah, I already got my tickets for Thursday. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, if I if we're free this weekend, of course we'll definitely have to go. We have we have to. That's not yeah. streaming, so we have to go to theaters. So I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's all good. So the week after is Matrix. Yes. Oh, okay. I was, I was confusing him. Okay. As well as a bunch of other stuff like The Witcher okay. and stuff like that. So. Right. A, a lot of people have been, uh, they've been dying, man. To, they really want to know. It's really funny. Uh, they really want to know what me and Lady Fabler think of Ghostbusters Afterlife. And it's, re- it's, it's really funny because we're constantly getting messages like, hey, did you guys see the movie yet? You guys going to review it yet? You guys going to review it and I'm just like, they have blood schedules insane. We're we'll try to see it this weekend if we can. But now Spider Man's come on. I don't know. We might have to put do a, Ghostbusters. Do a double. Uh, uh, do a, do a double. Double movie. If double. we have time. If we have time, we'll see yeah. what happens. Uh, I wanted to see that Guillermo del Toro new movie though, because I like Del Toro. I like him as a as a. Director. What's this one called? Oh man. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> if you look it up, you'll find it there. All right. Uh, Did it just but, uh, come out? Like literally just. Uh, it's been out for a few weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, anything that guy does, I'm I'm really interested in for sure. So we'll see, guys. We'll see everyone about this old ghost post. Nightmare Alley. Thank you, Bo. Nightmare Alley. That's oh, cool. Nightmare Alley. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the one with um Bradley Cooper and Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I love her. Yeah. Not so only as an of... actress, but she's just hot. Oh well, yeah. I mean, come on, Thor Ragnarok, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, she looked good in that outfit, boy. All right. <laughs> Hella can yeah. spear me with that. <laughs> she can invade. And then I'll I'll spear her right back, baby. <laughs> oh, hey, watch watch out now. Oh, sorry, friendly. Uh, friendly? No, it's no, not. not on my show. <laughs> not on my show. All right, we're getting ready to talk about the Matrix trilogy. Uh, remember, yes. those of you who have just popped in, uh, just remember, quick reminder, next week we'll be doing the movie challenges on the next podcast with me and Retro Leo uh, with The Raid. Retro Leo's never seen The Raid. I have never seen Interstellar. So we're going to be talking about that uh, next Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. All right, man. 1999. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show a little jiffy to Jiff. I call them Jiffs. I know they're gifts. God damn it! But I've been saying Jiffs for so long. <laughs> I don't think either one is wrong, in my opinion. It's simplified. It's just they're more fun right. to say Jiff. I don't know why. But I got a gift here. And back in the day, five billion years ago, uh, a samurai was a lot thinner then. And uh, I was sitting down watching TV. 
and there was a TV spot for a movie that, that was coming out soon. 1999. And all I saw was this. All I saw was this in the TV spot. And I was like, what the fuck is this? So like, I was instantly like, what is this? Like, where the hell did this come out of nowhere? Like, what, what is this? And I guarantee you, for those that hate and love the movie, I guarantee you, when this came on TV back in 1999, nobody who saw the TV spot, nobody saw this and went, gay? I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee to you, Nobody saw that and saw and said that well, well that looks fucking stupid. Nobody did. Whether you hated the movie or not, it's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about is visually when that TV spot came on, I was like, what the I don't know what to think. I don't know. And the big buzz, don't forget, guys, the big buzz of that year was Star Wars Episode One. And even though that was a huge hit in its own right, you know George Lucas in a way was like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> God yeah. damn this fucking Matrix movie that's taken over the goddamn world. You know he was pissed. Oh yeah, even it though was, Star Wars was it's still a huge hit. It's it was the big hit. talk that year. Uh, the, yeah. the big question was what a lot of people didn't know what the Matrix was even after seeing the movie. Which, yeah, yeah. You know, like that boggles my mind. Even after I saw it for the first time, I'm like, I think it's kind of obvious what the Matrix. But yeah, there was a lot of people that didn't. <laughs> they did not know. They were, did oh, not boy. know what the Matrix was. They were like. I had to see it twice to understand. I'm like, really? Oh, God. Oh, come on. I guess maybe it's because I was a nerd. I can understand the whole, <laughs> you know. A, yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. But funny These, thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I had zero interest in this movie when it came out, even after that commercial. Mm. I, did, I did not see it in All the right. theaters. Okay. I, not, I, I saw it for the first time on DVD. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So you were the one that shouted gay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, came out of Reeves? Doing a toga? <laughs> Not a toga doing the, the limbo gay. <laughs> uh, oh man. Oh well no, that's probably a great that's probably an even better thing that you went in with zero expectations. Yeah. I didn't have high expectations, but I was really interested though. I was like, what what am I looking at right now? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. So 1999, man, directed by the Wachowskis. Y'all know who's in this movie. Keanu, Keanu Reeves, Fishburn. Carrie Ann Moss, you know, just a great cast. And, uh, you know, a lot of there's one thing people don't talk about when they talk about these movies, they don't talk about the score. It's and the great. soundtrack is very good. And I'm not talking about the, you know, I'm not talking about the soundtrack soundtrack, which I burned to death. I burned that soundtrack to death. I'm talking about the actual instrumental score. Yeah, is very good, and nobody talks about it when they talk about these movies. So uh, I forgot who the composer's name is, but shout out to uh, that person uh, because it was very good, very good soundtrack. You know, and even with this the newest trailer that came out, and you hear that theme right in the beginning, you instantly recognize it's the Matrix. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that guy gets any credit. You know, so uh, score is uh, very, very well done. So. Y'all know, y'all already know what this movie's about, but I'll just briefly read the hilarious IMDb plot synopsis because they entertain me now. <laughs> okay, so when a beautiful stranger, uh, when a beautiful stranger, there you go, <laughs> you gotta love IMDb plot synopsis, man. Yep. <laughs> when a beautiful stranger leads computer hacker Neo to a foreboding underworld, he discovers the shocking truth, the life he knows is the elaborate deception of an evil cyber intelligence. Close enough. Close enough. Uh, but yeah, really was pleasantly surprised uh, after watching this movie. And it was, it was, it really took over the world. Like my friends couldn't stop talking about it. Everybody, everybody couldn't stop talking about the movie. It was a huge hit. It was a phenomenon. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about what we liked and what we didn't like about the Matrix. Is there anything you didn't like about it, Rob? Uh, Nitpick, watching or... it, not really. Uh, I just, I, it should have stopped at the first one, in my opinion. Yes. But yes. I can't really sit here and say there's, there's anything I didn't like. I think it right. did a good job setting up the world. Um, one of the things that I noticed in the movie, because uh, I did watch it recently, was 
it really you, they don't pull Neil out of the Matrix until almost an hour into the movie. Yeah, it's like forty five minutes in before he gets pulled out, mm-hmm. and you don't realize how long you know because everything from that point flows so well from yeah. the moment you meet him, the computer, the girl at the door, follow the white rabbit, go to the book club, meet Trinity, then you meet the agent. I mean, it's set up so perfectly. There's yeah. actually not a whole lot of action in this movie until you get to the end. Yeah. And I, I think that good story, it was very story driven the first movie. I think that's what made it so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can got a chance to get to know the characters and got to know the characters. All that stuff. Yeah. It mm. wasn't, um, it was, they were, well, when we get into Reloaded, I, I'll tell you where the parallels are and how much they really shifted into one direction. Okay. Which is why I think the next two movies weren't nearly as good or even needed for that matter. But, yeah, right. man, I, I can't really say I have anything to complain about this movie. Uh, it's sci-fi number one, which I love. Right. It has great pacing and storytelling. Mm-hmm. You know, when when you go that long in an action sci-fi movie without showing hardly any action, right? And you're able to keep the audience engaged. You got a good good story going on here, and I, yeah. that's what it was because a lot of people at that time you can't you can't think of it now because now that you've seen the movie a hundred times it's like who could not see that this is the matrix right but initially people did not know what the matrix was even after neo was broken free i it's one thing i never forget hearing like people go like what the hell is this thing and and <laughs> well Lawrence that's Fisher, probably that's probably why will smith turned the role down yeah he was like what is this shit yeah, yeah. so i wonder but if he nah, regrets that i don't have hardly <laughs> any complaints the only thing i will say Mm. And and this is something. This is more of a nitpick, but it okay. does get okay. more more uh, obvious in the following two films okay. to a point where I feel like <clears throat> really, really was a detriment. Was yeah. sometimes they're a little bit too serious. Mm. Like there's okay. there's you know like without Tank and Dozer there, and I maybe there's a parallel there because they're actually real humans, right? And they've been in the real world where someone like Neo and Trinity were born into bondage as i see yeah. in the movie they were born right. they were harvested born then mm-hmm. harvested into the matrix um there's just very it's very, i mean i get it it's a bleak situation but there's hardly any like moments where it's i don't want to say lighthearted i'm not saying it needs to be comedy but just a little bit too stiff in some and and, and gotcha. i said it before gotcha. counter reese is not a great actor He's not. I don't care what anyone says. He's a good. <laughs> he's a good. Um, you gotta give him the physical, right role. He's a good physical actor. You yeah. know, he can learn obviously martial arts. Look, he's right. almost fifty now. He's still doing it. And John Wick, he's still doing it. I up. know. I know. So that that's really where his talent is. Um, so it's hard. You know, Lawrence Fishburne to me was a standout of the movie. Oh yeah. Um, Carrie Ann Moss was new at the time, so mm-hmm. I, I find she's gotten better with age. But at the time, she was just coming out of I think being a model um oh wow okay yeah yeah so okay. you know um but look outside of that man the first matrix is just to me was revolutionary it's five stars yeah it's five stars it's revolutionary <clears throat> yeah um a lot of copycats came after this movie in terms of special effects and how does uh the cinematography and capturing different angles of mm-hmm. action sequences a lot this of parodies. Was, yeah, this, this was parody to death. Oh Jesus Christ, was it ever? <laughs> it became it became a, a cultural a cultural phenomenon yeah. and well deserved though in my well opinion. deserved absolutely a great original story, <clears throat> great pacing, great action, mm-hmm. um, a, a strong cast. Very all the, all of them were strong on the camera. Very you know you could feel yeah. their presence. Hugo Weaving yep, was yeah. one of the best. Is, is down yeah. as one of the best villains. Yeah. In, in Mr. Cinematic. Anderson. Yeah, yeah. right up there yeah. with Vader and Voldemort and those guys, you know. Uh, yeah, Agent That's Smith one of my was... favorite scenes in the movie, believe it or not, is when he loses it. Yeah. And because you know, the whole movie, they're they're the agents are kind of very robotic, they're yeah. emotionless, they don't show emotion. And then you have that one scene where they're trying to break Morpheus, and the other two agents leave, and it's just you know, Agent Smith in there with Morpheus, and he's tired yeah. of his shit. And he bra- he shows emotion. You know, the machine shows emotion. Or at least that pro the pro program started to show emotion. And he's yeah. I really like that scene because he loses it a little yeah, bit. It's just he's like smell. I can smell your stink. <laughs> you know, you fucking meat bags or whatever he said. You know, yeah. he's like, he I need, this is a fucking zoo. I need out of here. You know what yeah. I mean? I was I was like, holy shit. 
he's um yeah he's he's repulsed he's yeah yeah uh, yeah mr anderson tell me uh how do you expect to make a phone call if you're unable to speak to speak and i love the way he talks man it's very <laughs> deliberate love it love it yeah, yeah you love, kills that role you gotta love some some of the weave in there uh but yeah man it just to me it i mean it was it I, I recognized all of the homages that this movie was celebrating as well as kind of doing its own thing with it. Martial arts films, okay? John Woo movies, back in Gun Fu movies, back in the 80s. The, the, the long, dark coat with the sunglasses. That's John Woo in the 80s. Okay, you got martial arts. I said that already. Cyberpunk, anime. It's a combination of basically everything I love <laughs> in one movie. But there's a lot of people that don't like this movie, and I think that's fine. You know, you not everybody likes the same movie. But uh, I think there was a lot of love and hard work put into this. I mean, you bring fight choreographer Yuen Wu-Ping and his whole team in there because they're, they've are they been doing it for years, the wire work in Hong Kong. They know what they're doing. You bring up, you're, I mean, you're bringing over professionals because the Wachowskis were fans of those type of movies. So they sought them out. They were like, we got to bring in the professionals to do this. Yeah, you know, and we wouldn't have had, you know, scenes like the iconic dojo fight and the wire work done so well, you know, and you know, I just it just works, man. I had just I had a blast watching rewatching this for this video tonight, you know, like I was just I felt the same way. I just everything worked. I mean, the the whole beginning, like you were saying, almost felt like a film noir movie. Yeah, the way the shots and the, the camera angles and the the dark lighting and just, you know, just, it felt like a mystery, you know, yeah, dark lighting just, with that green hue yeah, to emphasize yeah, the, the yeah, code right. of the matrix. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a job well done by them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I get it. It's not for everybody, but I mean, iconic scenes like this, I mean, come on, coming in, nobody was ready for this, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the best. In 1999, dude, think. nobody was ready for this shit, dude. When like this came out of nowhere. Guns I mean, the dude blazing. is doing cartwheels and shooting guns. Who did that yeah. back then? Nobody. There did. you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe like you said, maybe in some of those Oriental uh, John Woo movies, yeah, that wasn't here in the states. You know, it was to a yeah, in much the less states. degree, but this kind of right. this kind of went out. Yeah, look at it right there. I the mean, this is great. The freaking M16. What is that? Yeah, I mean, just action ablaze, and it just the action felt satisfying. And it was funny because when, when when I saw this movie in the theater, nobody was really prepared to see Keanu Reeves do Kung Fu. So they kind of, la they laughed at first a little bit. They chuckled a little bit because they weren't used to it. Especially, I think it was kind of supposed to be comedic anyway when he starts bouncing around like Bruce Lee. He does yeah, the, yeah, he rubs the, the thumb nose, thing, yep, yep. you know, like, you know. But, I mean, they, uh, Yuen Wu Ping and his team and his, uh, uh, what later became Keanu Reeves' teacher, martial arts teacher tiger chen who you'll see in the staircase fight in the sequel um he i mean they trained their butts off they had to go through several months of training before they even filmed dude they wanted to make sure these guys movements were perfect not this bullshit yeah you know? and for 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 you know it's like yeah keanu this is his first time doing stuff like this so yeah he did look a little stiff however he greatly improved with his movements from the second and third movie. Oh yeah. He moved a lot smoother. He got it a lot better. You know what I mean? But still, you got to give credit where credit's due, man. Like everybody yeah, thought, came together. I thought it was good. It was more than passable. I mean, <laughs> oh it, yeah. I never felt like I wasn't never felt like I wasn't immersed in the movie because of his martial arts. I think right. I think they trained for like like I remember watching the special behind you know, mm -hmm. the behind the bonus features on the original DVD when I got it but years ago. Yeah. And I think they did like nine months of intense, like six day a week, yeah. multiple times a day training. Yeah. To really get it down. I mean, these guys worked hard for that shit. Yep. I can't imagine the sores and the pain every it's night. It's not it's not easy to do a do a Hong Kong style fight sequence. You know, it's not easy to do, you know, because it's all you gotta get the timing right, man. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna look messy. Can you imagine trying to fight in a suit too? Like you go, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, insane. Yeah. I know, I'm right? Never comfortable in the blazer. Yeah, and to do to do kung fu moves in a blazer, and how many yeah. takes, and how many times you have to do it throughout the film? Yeah, 
And like you were saying earlier, also you're throwing in, you get this great fight choreography from, from, from experts, legends that have been doing it for years, mixed with, you know, this technical excellence, you know, really pushing the envelope with the camera work here. You know, yeah. it was just, everything worked. It shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, and it's amazing. I, that's one of the first things I wanted to see when I first saw the movie years ago was how did they do that? And they it's amazing. They have this whole, they have this basically like a little arena uh -huh. with like 90 cameras going in a circle, yeah. covered all in green screen so you don't see it when they actually do the shot. And right. each one just shoots a frame in a matter of seconds, one after the other. And that's how they and that's how they did it. So yeah. it's they're actually like when Trinity does that kick, right? You know, she's doing it and frame it's catching frame. her from every angle, frame yeah. by frame. Yeah. And that's how they got the shot. And then I mean, that's just so innovative at the time. Oh, yeah. How they did that. Oh, yeah. yeah it's something different, something new. Yeah. And awesome. most importantly, I had, you know, I was watching it all three movies to you know get ready for the podcast tonight. And one thing that really stood out to me that I didn't appreciate at the time, and what's my main pet peeve, movie Dojo Army and everybody watching, that you always hear Samurai Guy bitch about, and I'm always pissed off at this stuff, man, is when you can't see the fucking fight. Yes. Look at that. I'm, I'm, hitting, my, I'm hitting my goddamn mic right here. I'm, not, I'm already angry. <laughs> well, I feel you, man. I was about when to hit When you mine. got tons of fucking shaky cam... And, and and five billion edits for one punch. Hey, Rob. Hey, we could see the fight. Oh, absolutely. We can fucking see the fights in this trilogy, man. You can I even, see everything. I even feel like it's it's deliberate that way. Like, not when I say deliberate, like they actually want you to see move by move, you right? Because right. sometimes, you, even if you get a good shot of a fight scene, you know, yeah. um, I wouldn't even be surprised if they slowed it down slightly. Because I've seen fight scenes where the moves are happening so fast, you know, you could see the fight clearly, yeah. But you can't really see moves. You hear you could see move for move. Yeah, you could and, break um, it down. Yeah, yeah, you could actually sit there and like, wow, look at that punch. And I wouldn't like, be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Like when he punches him in the chest and then he opens his hand and yeah, you yeah. know, like that's Dude, that's awesome. like kung fu, bro. Like that's straight out of Hong Kong. And I, you know, credit to the Wachowskis, they're a huge fan of Yuen Bo Ping movies. So they were like, hey, we got to make sure we don't fuck this up. We got to make sure we film this shit and we, everybody can see the martial arts. Yeah. And this was 1999, guys. And now yeah. you see why Samurai Guy absolutely hated Snake Eyes because they fucked it up. I will not stop bitching about Snake Eyes this year. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I guess I can pass on Oh, that you one. won't see it when you watch the movie. You won't <laughs> see the fighting. <laughs> like, like the editor fucked it all up, dude. And they brought oh, in a professional fight choreographer. These are like legends who did the fights. And I feel sorry for the actors that worked their asses off, dude. Because you just see this. It's, oh, it's, I, I, it, it, will, it will not end. <laughs> uh, Maybe next year I'll stop talking about it. But right now I'm going to talk one about One of my favorite G.I. Joe characters, too. I can't believe they did that. Oh, and guess what, Rob? By the end of the movie, you're going to hate Snake Eyes. Really? They, they made a movie where you you will hate the character and you will root for Storm Shadow. Oh, Jesus. Good job. Good job. Oh, I'll definitely Severio's skip on the that. only guy in the world that likes Snake <laughs> you like It's Snake okay. Eyes? It's okay, Severio. I'm just messing with you, man. It's okay if you guys enjoyed Snake Eyes. This is Samurai Guys. Well, issue. to be fair, Severio, <laughs> Severio also likes Camp Crustaceous on Netflix. So, oh. you know, it's not exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Severio. I had to. I had to. I had to roast you there. <laughs> you coming? You coming to? Coming to Rob? You're gonna get roasted. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was just such a nice thing to see, especially mainstream Hollywood American released movies that have martial arts in them. These have been my pet peeves for years, and when they yeah. get it right, they get it right. It's like thank God. Yeah. But yeah, they don't it was get it right nice. very often. <laughs> Right. But yeah, I mean, just a great, phenomenal movie. Definitely holds up, in my opinion. And look at that scene right there that you just showed. A lot of video games adapted that after this movie. The bullet time. The the slow, yeah. yep, the bullet time slowdown yeah. became a big feature in, in quite a number of games 
uh, even still, I think even re- as recent as a couple of years ago, I think uh, there was a game that I played recently that had it. And I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, well, Call of Duty uses it a lot. Oh, okay. they use it a lot in the campaign. Yeah, you can do right. the slowdown. I think uh, not. I don't remember when did the Max Payne games come out. Max that Payne was... did it. I think right, Hitman right. did it. If I'm right. not mistaken, um, I believe even Alan Wake did it. So oh. a lot of there were a lot of games that adapted that bullet slowdown time. Right, right. And to put the little cherry on top, the movie ended with the end credits with a Rage Against the Machine song in the credits. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, yo. Raise yeah, against the yeah, machine. Yeah, That's yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, man. What you say? What yeah, you say? dude. What you just, say it now? just gets me pumped. But yeah, yeah it's still, still entertaining. Uh, yeah. Rewatching this, it doesn't and get old watching the Matrix. And dude, uh, another great fight was Morpheus and Agent Smith in that small little bathroom, bro. Oh yeah, that was that brutal. was a beatdown, dude. That yeah. was gritty, slamming him on the toilet like that, dude. It was a brutal like, fight. He he yeah, handed uh, his ass to him. I mean, oh, it's good stuff. They really did a good job right there conveying that what they were talking about with the agents was true. Like right. you could, you, they just would pound your ass to the ground. Yeah. And could easily just beat you to death. Yeah. And just like that beginning sequence, I remember the audience going, holy shit, when Trinity was running for her life in the beginning of the movie and she dives through the window, rolls down the stairs, and then pulls out the double, the double pistols in yeah. fear for her life. And everybody well, in the theater, even, everybody in the theater was like, "What the fuck? Like, holy shit!" Yeah, I know. Like, well, and the funny thing is, you're thinking, you know, when you first see the beginning of the movie, you're thinking, "All right, here's a, a woman who's hacking. She's getting busted. The FBI's there." You're thinking, "Is this a normal thing?" Yeah. Suddenly, she leaps a building like sixty feet. Right. Then the FBI agent doesn't. You're like, "Wait a minute, what the fuck? Is going? <laughs> this is not normal." Yeah, and then yeah. even the cops are like. Oh, yeah, that's impossible. impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. she flies across the building into the window of the other one. And yeah. at that point, you're like, all right, you get intrigued. You know, you're like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a perfect opening. And then after that, they kind of die down the action. And that's when they get into the story. And right. they try to show you, uh, you know, what the Matrix is. And then yeah. Yeah. Pe- people still didn't figure just, it out. Just after well done. watching the movie the first time. <clears throat> just well done. Yeah. Overall, very well done. A classic for sure. Now, if you guys hate the Matrix movie, that's perfectly fine. I have really good friends that usually like the stuff I like, and they hate the Matrix movie. Perfectly fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings. All right. Uh, The only thing that annoys Samurai Guy is when people, this, I heard this a lot because I tried to get other people to watch the martial arts movies that have inspired. The fight choreographer and his team, you, you know, Yuen Wuping directed movies. I try to have other people watch those movies, and they all think it's garbage, and they all think it's shit because it doesn't have that Hollywood polish. That pisses me off. <laughs> that annoys me. You can hate the Matrix all you want, but that kind of stuff annoys me. When I show them, like, Iron Monkey and shit like that, and then, like, and then they'll watch Iron Monkey, you know, Donnie and Classic, and they'll be like, man, this is stupid. See, in the Matrix, tricks it makes sense why they can fly around and da, 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 da. that kind of stuff annoys the hell out of me dude it's like it's the same fucking goddamn team it's the same shit it's, it's running the on the wall style. running on the wall just because it doesn't have that hollywood polish you, you guys think it's trash that stuff annoys me <laughs> i don't even think i think that's not even a, a valid argument i mean if they're gonna make the argument i don't think it's about hollywood polish i think it's more because they don't well, have a budget. Why I mean, Hong Kong around. Hong Kong movies are low budget movies. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of those movies out there are. I mean, this is the same argument we have in the Godzilla community. Right. You know, like uh, of course, uh, even for the time those older Showa movies came out, they don't have Hollywood polish. Um, right. Even Shin Gojira didn't have Hollywood polish. But that's just the nature of the beast. That's how these films are are filmed. You know, you yeah. you appreciate them for more than just the polish you appreciate them for the amount of work that you could see that goes into making the film right and the performances that are put on because look i can criticize the story of most godzilla movies that came out of japan but what i won't criticize is the excellent performance of those men in those suits yeah because i sure as fuck can't do that yeah yeah (laughs) you know yeah but yeah that's the only thing that annoys me (laughs) it's just like 
I get it. But it makes sense that they can run up the walls because of the matrix. I'm like, oh my god, get out, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, just never you you just realized I just showed you the same goddamn thing right now, right? With a guy running up on the wall and flipping this way. You, I just showed you. Oh, but it looks like, I was like, all right. Yeah, all right. For, we can't be friends. Just, they just need a logical reason. And sometimes you can't go into watching a movie with with a hundred percent logic, depending on what the genre is. You know. Yeah, yeah. If we but all did, just, then I don't think I don't think a lot of films would do very well. You know. Yeah. But there's a there's some people out there. You know, speaking of the raid, which we're going to talk about next Tuesday. The raid only costs a million dollars. That's it, and and that's including production and and advertising. It was only a million dollars. Is that the movie the that game. takes place in one building and uh-huh. there's a man trying to get through the building? Uh huh. I gotta see that. I've heard so many good things about. it. I haven't seen it dude, yet. It's so intense and violent, dude. It's right up our alley, bro. You will. I will be stunned if you didn't like. I gotta check it out because it's like, oh, remember when the human being and the stuntman were the special effect? Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's the very stunt true. Men, yeah, that's how it was in the eighties, bro. You know, like martial arts are great. Plus, you're going to be introduced to Iko Uwe, so you're going to love him as a martial arts star. You're going to be introduced to that guy. And I see uh, if it's on Prime. It's probably on Prime for like four dollars to rent. Yeah, but Prime has everything. So. It used to that, and the sequel used to be on Netflix, and it's gone. So yeah, it's got yeah, the raid is phenomenal, dude. This, as soon as the action starts, bro, it's crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> it's so insane, many movies on my dude. watch list, and yeah. Oh yeah, it is. There it is. Two ninety nine. Oh, okay. Rent. Okay. And there's there, the un- uh, unrated two, edition. Yeah, that's the one you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't yeah. watch it dubbed unless you don't care. I I prefer original language, but it's you know it, it is what it is. But I'll, I'll give you a little taste. Here's a little taste because this I had these gifts uploaded in here because we were supposed to talk about it tonight. But here's a little taste right, right here. Here you go. Oh, 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 yeah, that's a little taste. That's all you get. <laughs> me, I, I've had this movie on my radar because, yeah, yeah, I've heard it talked about many times and I've, I've never gotten around to watching it. Maybe, maybe tonight I'll break the ice. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the Ray 2. I heard the Ray 2 wasn't as good as the first one, though. It's well, here's the thing the direct the people don't like the Ray 2. I love it. People don't like the Ray 2 because it's a completely, totally different type of movie. Than the first raid, and the and the director's like, you want me you want me to make the same goddamn movie again where the guy is in the building and he's outnumbered? Is that what you want? Yeah. So the raid two continues the story with the lead character, but it's a straight up gangster flick, bro. It's a straight up gangster drama. That's a totally different. It's not a nonstop action movie like the first one. It's a gangster story. However, the action scenes that you get in there are fucking amazing. Still. So you still, when when there's action, you're going to be like, holy fuck. When there's a fight, you're going to be like, shit. All so right. the Ray 2 is still legit. It's still legit. And then when you're feeling ballsy enough, then you can try The Night Comes For Us on Netflix. The Night Comes For Us. Okay. Yes. Then you can try that one. Let, let that be your third movie. <laughs> yeah, I've been so, I've been yeah. trying to catch up with like a lot of anime. So we've yeah. been, cause normally on Tuesdays, I do an anime stream. Right. So this is so much shit to watch. But what I'm doing is, I'm, since I'm watching so much stuff, I'm yeah. doing a lot of writing so I can do reviews on all this shit so it doesn't go yeah, to waste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, when so a lot sure of reviews coming. Here. Yeah, The Raid, Raid 2, Electric Boogaloo, and then The Night Comes for Us, and you're good to go. All right, let's keep it moving along. Matrix Reloaded 2003. Freedom Fighters, Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus continue to lead the revolt against the machine army, unleashing their arsenal of extraordinary skills and weaponry against the systematic forces of repression and exploitation. All right. So was this the longest line, movie line, you ever uh, stood in? (laughs) Did you see this in theater or you waited uh, on video? I did see this one in theaters because at this point I was really heavily into the Matrix. It was very much like Star Wars. I mean, there Dude, were people was... lining up, dressing up. Yeah. I remember uh, seeing on TV, like in Japan. Yeah, Japan, they were hard for this stuff. I mean, they were showing people online dressed as like the ghost. People online dressed as Trinity, Neo. I mean, I was like, this is like Star Wars now. This is like yeah. really craziness. Yeah. So yeah, I remember standing online to watch this one. It was long. It was one of the longest lines 
I have samurai guys ever stood in, man. Like it was like for it was like around I remember, the corner. Yeah, I I could remember some of the longest lines for movies. This was one of them. I remember Independence Day being one mm. when it came out. That was first Transformers one. was insane. Yes. And uh Batman Forever, believe it or not, might have been the longest line I stood into. Batman, Batman Forever. Forever. <laughs> yeah. No shit. I know, right? It's probably crazy, were like, man. yeah, that was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know until you watch it you know what i mean yeah. so yeah 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 oh man all right so let's get into this one so how did you feel about this as soon as it started as soon as the movie started the when you watched it the first time the first time i did watched you feel a little weird like it was kind of like something felt off but you were still kind of enjoying yourself at the same time yeah what felt off was the stakes mm. because in the first one Despite the fact that Neo was coming into his own, you know, there was still that doubt that he could right, be right. an agent. And this one, right off the bat, he's beaten three of them. That right. I had a problem with. Like, I, I know he's like, you don't want to make him too OP. Like, we can still be in a situation where he's learning his powers. I think they gave him all his powers too soon because. Okay. The the agents in this movie were very underwhelming. Now I get I, it. You, you I figured it out. It. I figured it out. What's up? Why it felt off? This felt like the third movie. <laughs> right. Like, this That's felt like true. the third movie, especially when you're in Zion. You're like, did we stumble across a long running ten year sci fi show or something? Yeah. <laughs> like when you get to Zion, you get all introduce all those characters and the the base and all that. It was just like. I felt like we were on a show. Like the we were world, the, the world got very big, very fast. Yeah, you that's know, because, what it is. Because in the first one, <clears throat> it's very. It feels very claustrophobic. Even when they're right. flying the ship, everything yeah. is 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 closed in. You know, right. they're in this ship. There's like seven or eight of them, and then even less towards the end of the movie. This one suddenly, every motherfucker is wearing sunglasses and leather. It's like right. all over the place. With that said, though, because I, I gotta, be, I want to go for my first viewing. Yeah. At that time, I didn't really pay any attention to that. Me I neither. Was so I was so involved in wanting to yeah. see where the story was going. I wanted to see right. more Neil. I wanted to see more crazy special effects. I remember how much I loved, loved that fight scene with Smith in the park. Right. And I looked right. at it the other day, and I'm like. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because I have the opposite reaction to that, <laughs> which is hilarious. Which we'll, we'll we'll get to that, but no, I get it. Oh, hi. Oh, oh, she, she says hi. <laughs> she's she's about to go to bed. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's just uh, kisses. No, I kiss. totally get. Let, let me hear what you don't like about it. I get it because I'm pretty sure. So that was that, what, how that's I used one. To look at it. The other thing was. Um, <clears throat> About, Again, no, about that fight. About that. Oh, about fight. the fight. So, yeah, yeah. looking at it now, right? It. Why do we need so many Smiths? Number one, I understand the story behind it, but right. you could still make him a virus without literally make him, <clears throat> making him copy himself. Because I think right there, you put yourself into a corner, you okay. know. Because if Smith almost kills him in the first movie, and he's supposed to be stronger in this movie, how the hell is he beating ninety of them? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then, and it's not only that. I kind of liked. Again, this is on on the the next viewings. <clears throat> Initially, when I first saw it, I didn't give a shit about yeah. any of this. I was well too excited. But uh, the other issue I have is I, I like that claustrophobic feeling. Right. You right. know, I, I I know Zion existed in the first movie because you know Tank. I think they Tank mentioned. and Joseph mentioned it. We don't have to see it right That's away true. you know what yeah. i mean yeah and on top of that one of the opening scenes they go into the matrix and suddenly everybody goes into the matrix there was no hint of this in the first movie mm. why did we have only two people trying to rescue neo if there's a whole other ships that go into the matrix right and all you got to do is call in and and get to a certain location right um and then the other thing that bothers me is and this is on again a recent viewing and and you know subsequent viewings from the first time. <clears throat> yeah. I feel 
that it got so overly saturated with sunglasses mm. that we needed a reason as to why they're wearing them. <laughs> Seriously, I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but it actually started bothering me. Right. Like, well, when they had that, is... when they had the meeting, yeah, like right in the beginning when they had the meeting, everybody the meeting. had sunglasses on. <laughs> everywhere. Everyone, everywhere. Roy Jones Jr. Y'all must Roy have forgot. Jones, everyone, had, uh, everywhere in both on. movies were wearing sunglasses no matter what. <laughs> Why? Like. They just want to look cool, man, I guess. And it's I get that. But now that I'm looking at it from a from a narrative perspective, we could. I think there was a wasted opportunity there. Why yeah. not have it be that the reason they wear sunglasses <clears> is because if they don't wear sunglasses, they tend to see coding in the matrix like it glitches in and out so like they can like, see kind of like, hum- like, kinda like how live, neil always they live glasses right so they need the glasses yeah. to block it out <clears throat> right i think that would make more sense because it does look ridiculous that everybody is wearing sunglasses everywhere no matter what doesn't matter if it's sunlight doesn't Just matter if it's dark it's yeah. a meeting in the cave <laughs> in the back cave in the batmobile anywhere <laughs> they're wearing sunglasses everywhere and i'm like yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> I noticed that too. I was kind of like, oh boy. Uh, but yeah, like, yeah, I think that would have worked actually. I think you created something that should have been used. Like there's a reason why they have these special type of glasses. Like they live, they saw the alien world. They saw the aliens. Yeah. Know? But this one would be, be the reverse. They can it could be like the it's blocks protection. out glitches. Like, like, yeah. I, yeah. Like they, they can, they can see a normal world. Right. Now that they're not plugged in, but every now and then there's a glitch of matrix code, and that could cause them a fight. It can mess, get them shot, get them killed. So they have right. the sunglasses to keep a consistent view of the world right. around them. Get some blue blockers. Yeah, <laughs> blue blockers. <laughs> <laughs> blue blockers sponsored by the Matrix. Uh, whew, I just dated yeah, myself right now. Dropping a deuce while wearing shades. Yeah, yeah. Art seventy four. <laughs> Dude, I mean, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean. <laughs> oh shit! Take 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 them off. Take them off. Put them on. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're having fun here. Oh yeah, but yeah, I think that's what it was. It felt like we we were watching the Matrix TV series that's been on for five years. And we're like right in the middle of it, yeah. especially, uh, of course, you know, my boy, stuntman, Daniel Bernhardt. It was cool seeing him in here. And he was in this, he was up fr- up front. He was the, you know, oh, upgrades. He was the guy in front right there. And then he, oh, he's the him? one jumping on, he's the one jumping on the cars right there. Uh, oh, Daniel nice. Bernhardt. Yeah. He's a badass for sure. But yeah, I mean, Keanu greatly improved in his movements a lot smoother, a lot more natural, you know. You know, and again, look at this. This is like five or six movements in the in one take. Yeah, and that's, that's what martial arts movies are all about. Not just one punch cut. And then, and then you know what I mean? They do that for actors that, don't, that can't fight, that don't know how to move, that are not least athletic. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why some, believe it or not, some dancers uh, actually become very good on screen in, ter- in terms of on screen fighters because they have the athleticism. Like Michelle Yeoh. We love Michelle Yeoh. She's amazing, but she was a dancer. Yeah. And then she learned along the way, you know. She's but, um, I love her. I know, dude. I know. She's just fantastic. But, yeah. She doesn't age either, man. I know. I mean, she was in the Joy Luck Club like 30, 40 years ago, and I'm like, she yeah. looks the same. I know. It's crazy. I know. Uh, I think Super Cop with Jackie Chan, I think that was 1993, dude. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's a mid-90s movie. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, when, when we were introduced to Zion and Morpheus goes up there to give the big speech, I was, Zion, in the theater- <laughs> hear me. was that even him? Like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just, no, no, no. no. Every time I hear that, I'm like, is can that- you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> can you dig it? Yeah, like, oh, man. like I, I was in the theater. Like, this is weird. Like, I'm, I, I'm liking this, but this is weird. At the same, it just felt weird. It just, it just felt off. You it felt know, like it was a just, big. It's just a big jump. Yeah, like again, this, like this just felt like the third film. You know, 
and you got you know Morpheus up there like we will show them that we are not afraid now let's start the orgy oh my god yes <laughs> yeah i mean why did they even have techno music they should have just put porn music on <laughs> it's the orgy scene man yeah but like you know as much as we like keanu reeves and as much as we like trinity and and i'll be i'll be honest when we saw the trailer for the fourth movie it was cool and then the nostalgic aspect seeing them together but in terms of storytelling i still kind of feel their relationship was fast-tracked it like, was well i think really it, forced i thought a little it felt you know? that way because it it the problem with the matrix sometimes i think is that they these guys don't show emotion mm. like it, when you watch the movie anybody who's in chat whatever watch the movie again pay very especially in the second and third movie pay very close attention to how these people speak right right morpheus yes niobe yeah. We must go like they're they're just as yeah. robotic as the agents are, so it's hard to kind of convey any mm. emotional feelings for a couple that talk like they're robots. Like, yeah, I, be, I you know, and not only that, it's kind of told to us why Trinity feels the way she feels because she was right. told by the Oracle, right? So it's like it wasn't something that actually developed naturally per se. It was something that was expected because the character was told, and then in transition we were told. Right. So it's almost like we were we were brainwashed into expecting them to be in love and and to accept it when it happened. Um, right. With that said, I I was sold on it. You know. Yeah. Enough that you know it wasn't a, a, as strong a sell, but I believe there right. was a connection there because she's the one that reached out to him first. She right. she was with she was by his side the whole way. From the moment he came out the Matrix, the bitch died for him twice. Right. right so that right, is right. enough for me to be like, all right, I'm, I'm sold <laughs> on that. You know, even though they talk like robots and, yeah, I mean, you can't just sacrifice your life twice for one person and not be in love with them. Right. So that enough is enough for me. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sunglasses and serious faces is abound in the last two movies. Yeah. So back to the movie. Uh, oh, sorry, I hit that by accident. Uh, uh, Neo being OP, he was too overpowered. You he thought. was way too overpowered, um, and and no real adversary that could match him. Even even Smith couldn't match him. Mm. One hundred and twenty Smiths, and he kicked their asses and flew off. I mean, you right. you have to you know even though the whole Trinity thing and that's one aspect that yes, there's stakes there. Right. But I mean, how long did they really last? You know, I mean, he went and pulled the bullet out, and then <laughs> then he restart her heart. He just re I mean, what yeah. else do you have to worry about when you have somebody like that fighting for you? <laughs> you know, like what do you like? You just yeah. jump off a building, yo, Neo. Can you mend these bones, yeah. man, please? <laughs> yo, yo, I swear to God, I suck your dick, Neo. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I got man. these cheese burgers, man. My leg is broke, bro. Come on now, Neil. <laughs> oh my god! But uh, before we move on here, back to this fight scene. So I used to hate this fight. I used to hate it, and the reason why I hated it back in the day, like it was okay. Like I didn't like. I didn't love it. Not hate. I didn't love it. But. You know, when it went to the PS3 graphics, I don't think oh. PS3 was out yet. Uh, yeah. It kind of no. took me out of it. However, that was back then. So rewatching it recently, I was really, I was really analyzing everything. And yeah, obviously the CGI could have been better. But here's the funny thing: there's there's movies now that have CGI that's just as bad. <laughs> oh my God! Yes, it, <laughs> if you true. think about it. Very if you true. think about it, it's just as bad. And this is 2003. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think they were being too ambitious. I think they were they had all these ideas and they wanted to make this insane, you know, anime style fight. And you know what's really funny is you could technically look at all three of these movies as superhero films. Yeah. 
you well, know. Once he starts flying and yeah, revi- yeah. I mean, superhero he's... landings, people knocking each other through walls. I mean, yeah. you easily could look at these movies that way. Yeah, but but I I, I actually kind of forgive this fight scene now i'm still not a huge fan of the ps3 neo but when i watched it from beginning to end i was analyzing it and i was like this took a lot of creativity to pull off right was it a little bit too long yeah you can argue that right but the creativity it gets creativity points for me to kind of make kind of helps me forgive it because if you watch everything just there's a lot of fight choreography where he's fighting multiple dudes throughout that thing before it goes to the cg stuff right and it's crazy dude like it's like dude keanu good job and keanu stunt double good job you know like it gets creativity points so i don't hate it as much as i used to however yeah. however uh what do you think about monica belucci showing up in the movie oh monica Bib- belucci <laughs> big boo belucci <laughs> one of the most attractive you want to hear something funny she's one of the most Attractive women in the world. They didn't pick her for James Bond's Tomorrow Never Dies because they considered her too old. Shit. So they got Terry Hatcher instead. Terry Hatcher? <laughs> so Over not, Monica? I'm look, not, no, I'm not look, making I, this up. I, I, look, I'll be real. I'm not knocking Terry Hatcher. I had a no, Terry Hatcher no. crush. Yeah. I saw her in yeah. a movie years ago with Robert Downey Jr. called Soap Dish, and she wore this dress with her boot. Oh, my yeah. Lord. But I mean, this is Monica Belushi. Let's not get crazy here, right? I mean, yeah. I'm not going to toss either one of them out the bedroom, but <laughs> I know, you know but I, mean? I I didn't know that. And when we were when we were going through our James Bond filmography, I found I found a uh, discussion. I found that out. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. It's funny because she ended up becoming a Bond girl later, but it's yeah. just kind of like, okay, <laughs> too old then. All right, sure. But now let's go ahead and get to the good stuff. So before we get to Colonel Sanders. And the movie takes a, a ridiculous halt. <laughs> like, it just, the movie goes, eh, as soon as he opens up that door and talks to Colonel Sanders. Before that, dude, I haven't watched this movie in years. Years. So re-watching this, I was just, I remember liking the, the freeway chase scene and the, and the staircase fight. Oh, that I remember, is, yeah, I remember, enjo- I remember enjoying it. But have it, not having watched it in years and just recently revisiting it, holy fuck, you guys. When it starts, when this staircase fight, this is fucking phenomenal. Oh, that, yeah, that sequence. So everything from the Merovingian meeting him all the way up to the end of the highway scene is yeah, just massive highway, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it just keeps going. It's so, like... Dude, multiple. But look, fun- look, you notice I mean, there, right? Everyone's wearing sunglasses, even the bad guys. <laughs> Everybody's true, right? wearing fucking sunglasses. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Tiger Chan is martial arts uh, teacher to Keanu Reeves. That's the guy in the back with the white on and the long hair. That's yeah, him. okay. Yeah, that's that's him. That's Tiger Chan. Yeah, this fight scene, the entirety of it is meaty, long enough, and Keanu Reeves fights with multiple weapons. It's fucking amazing dude yeah. like i forgot how good <laughs> that fight scene is so good yeah it's it is so really good, good. The i mean weapons the the this is why the fight scene against smith is is so diluted because you're taking you're you're being robbed of this yeah. kind of stuff right here right and i think that's why i don't like it as much now as i did when i first saw it look, when i first saw the, it i was like the oh guy my in God, the middle was... running on the side <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's insane. That's awesome. That wire. I mean, that is. This is all organic stuff. Where the fight yeah. with Smith is not, and there's really nothing special about it. You know what right. I mean? Like it's just. It, it really. It, it also takes away from Hugo Weaving and and Keanu Reeves, because mm. they had some so many great fight scenes in the first movie. They had like two. Well, well they had the one big one at the end. And now you don't yeah. get to see that. You, you. It's not a treat anymore to see them go at it, because I think every fight they've had since then is all CGI. Hmm. Right. You know, it's like a superhero battles later. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. But uh, yeah, he like he he's fought with Psy at some point. Like it was like five different weapons Keanu Reeves fought with. Yeah, it is fucking phenomenal, guys. You could see the fighting. It's just I forgot how good. I really was like blown away. I, even it though looks like it doesn't even look though, like even too. though he's he's too op, like Rob said. Yeah, <laughs> come on, look at that. <laughs> still, 
if, still, that, if you saw someone do man. that, would you engage them in a fight? No. If you can't <laughs> beat be them with running bullets, away. you're not going to beat them hand to hand. Like, where's the logic there? I know. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. But yeah. And then and then it leads to because they're trying to find a, you know, the, was it the key master? The key master. <laughs> the key master. Oh, the key. I am the gatekeeper. Right, oh, wrong door. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Ghostbusters. Those doors Ghostbusters. And it's the dog from Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Greatest, greatest movie ever, if that happened. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so they're trying to they're trying to get a hold of him because they're trying to use the key master. I think it's key maker. Actually. I'm just gonna call him key master for key fun. master. Right? I think it's key maker. Uh, to bring Keanu Reeves to the architect and uh, Neo to the architect, and then that was supposed. According to Morpheus, that's that's gonna win the war. That's all we need to do is deliver him. That's it. To of the white course. man in the white suit with the white beard. Yeah, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. But let's let's keep talking about this, man. So first of all, we have this amazing shit. I mean, this this kind of stuff in the highway scene is the reason to buy the 4K. Right. Like that's it. <laughs> so we have this and then we got Morpheus fighting the tw- Look at this shit, man. This Morpheus is awesome. Fight- I love this scene. Oh my god. But take note, sunglasses yes. in a garage. So was Monica Belushi and the French guy the only ones without that sunglasses? didn't wear sunglasses out of all those people <laughs> and the people in the restaurant, but they don't count. Yeah, they don't count. They don't count. But dude, these guys have these abilities and he's slicing through. Them. I, I, I think, mean, yeah, that Jesus. is so cool. So and this is like after the staircase fight. Then we have one of the greatest highway chase sequences, I think, in movie history. Like, oh, absolutely. Just, Blown and away. And you know why it was great? watching this. It was all real effect. It was yeah. all CGI. They yeah. actually built a highway, like a, a mile and a half long. Yeah. And they actually had cars on the highway. Yeah. They had stunt drivers, and then they had normal extras. And they would just tell them, move forward, move yeah. back. And they yeah. shot it in such a way that it would just look like these cars were driving, but they actually weren't. They were just making short movements. And yeah. you saw everything from the perspective of like the motorcycle, the truck, other cars. Yeah. The it's just, I mean, bravo, man. That shit Dude, is just incredible what they it's did. Insane. Because it's like, and I had a director, April Wright, who did she was on the channel. And she's awesome. But I had her on the channel because uh we were talking about her documentary she made about stunt women. And I I forgot the name of the I'm so sorry, I forgot the name of the stunt woman that doubled Trinity for the bike yes. sequences. But dude, it's she's a she's a rock star. Bad ass on that. I bike. mean, people. I mean, this. Then you have this scene. <laughs> I mean, then you have this scene where Morpheus takes the katana, slices the car, and then the car flips over, and like a gangster, he shoots the car, and blows it up, and, and then the smashing there is that's an yeah. Escalade. <laughs> fucking How Escalade, dare you? Man. I know. How dare you? But yeah, this shit right here, dude. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Like this is phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal stuff. The the stunt woman was doing here. And yeah, it's and just that's all real. That's the, yes. Some of the cars are CGI, but like the cars. Perfect. Yeah, there's certain cars there that are real, legitimately yes. dodging her. <laughs> I remember watching the behind the scenes on this, and I was blown away. Yeah. by how they did this. I'm like, dude, she's a gangster, this. bro. She's she's a rock star. Like you know, she's just so good, and yeah, just phenomenal. Just and then and then it cuts to Morpheus fighting. Daniel Barnhart on top of the truck. <laughs> they had a fight scene on top of the truck. Mm-hmm. Both trucks, cr- you know, crash and they're flying in the air. And then Super Neo comes down and, and picks them up, which was kind of fun Super in a way. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the reason to buy the 4K staircase fight leading up to the highway is yeah. unbelievable. And that's a good 30 minute sequence. Like yeah. I said, from because I even like the scene in the restaurant. The Merovingian was awesome. Yeah, my favorite oh, yeah. line is. My favorite, my favorite language is French. You can curse in French, and then he says a bunch of curses in French. He's like, it's like wiping your ass with silk. I love it. <laughs> I love that line. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Merovingian is just awesome, man. Oh so man! From the moment they step into the hotel and the restaurant, yeah. all the way to the end of the that whole part of the movie is just bananas, yeah. crazy good. Yeah. Oh man, that's so funny. <laughs> It's like wiping your ass with silk. Oh my god, so funny! <laughs> and and after after that amazing thirty minutes of badassity, that's just like five stars. Uh, the movie, you know, 
scratches to a screeching halt with Colonel Sanders. And the first time when I saw this in theater, well, I only saw this in theater once, but when I was in theater, when this scene came and it kept going, <laughs> I I was this close. Now I watch it, it, it goes by faster now. But when I was young, young samurai, <laughs> and after watching this, you know, this shit, you know, I was like still kind of pumped up. So when it got to this, and what was this is a good like what 15 minutes, 20 minutes? It's, it's it feels that way, but no. And here's the other thing. If you didn't bring a th- uh, thesaurus to the theater, you had no idea what the fuck this guy was saying. <laughs> Neil, you remain irrevocably human, concordantly, vis-a-vis. And I'm like, can you but then again, you know, he's a, he's supposed to be a machine, so that's why he's talking that way. Yeah. But uh when Samurai Guy goes to the movies, I'm not an asshole. I'm not a dick, okay? I usually just go in there and watch the movie and try to enjoy it and not bother other people and then get the fuck out of there. This, this was the one and only time when this scene came on that I was inches away from getting up and yelling, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but you, you know, it. the thing of it is, you're not it's the only one. A lot of people this felt that close, way. Man. I was this close. Like, what is going on? Uh, earlier, what was the what was the French guy's name again? Or the guy, uh, the Merovingian, Merovingian. Um, when he was telling Neo, uh, uh, talking about I had to deal with your prede- predecessors, and now yes. I have to deal with you. Yeah, Did he was he like mean the other Neo Neos. Yeah, Is that he what said he meant your by predecessors that? had more respect than this. Okay, and then that's when he sent his goons after him. So yeah, they were talking about the prior Neos or the prior okay. anomalies. They refer the five to five Neos. The yeah. five and uh, this Neil's the sixth one, right? Yeah, I believe. Okay, the systemic right. anomaly they called it. So, uh, let's talk about go ahead and talk about that scene in the uh, climax or the, the ending of the movie. Yeah, so then, uh, obviously, uh, the architect is what he was called, uh, created the matrix. He tells Neil that he's the sixth one. Neil kind of realizes, you know, this is like the first time he's hearing of this. And explains to him, you know, uh, basically you have two choices. Uh, one way or the other, Zion is fucked. This is essentially what he says. Right. He says, you go into one door, everything resets. Zion gets destroyed. Everything starts over. We select six men, 15 women, I think he said, to yeah. start the process over again. You go into the other door. You save your your uh, your love. Right. But I think he says everything gets destroyed. You know, right. I, I, if I recall. Something like that, yeah. Either way, it's not a win-win situation. So Neo expect obviously goes to save Trinity, and then right. the architect is surprised how quickly he makes the decision. Like he doesn't he doesn't take the time to think about it. Like right, he said, right. his predecessors, you know, because you know they have to weigh the options. And it turns out that you know he makes the choice, and here comes uh, here comes the robots to 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 fuck Zion. You yep. know, <laughs> should have went to the other door, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Niobe was also introduced in this film as well. And yes. they, she had a previous relationship with Morpheus. Mm-hmm. Uh, did they did they say why? Because it's been a while. Well, I just recently watched it, but I may have missed it. What? Why did he? She? Why did they break up? What happened? So they did never really it? explain it. It's alluded okay. that the reason they separated was because he was always like out there. Like they oh. just kind of grew apart because she had her okay. shit. He had That's his right. ship, and I think Commander Locke would used to be on Niobe's ship, and they kind of, you know, but right. uh, or I should call him the Martian Manhunter, uh, yeah, <laughs> making his right. DC EU debut in the <laughs> Matrix Revolutions and Reloaded because it was Warner Brothers, right? So you know, he was there all this time. He was there. The whole For people time. who were bitching that he showed up at the end of of, of Justice League, no, he's been there. <laughs> so but no seriously yeah they never really directly say what it is but okay. it's kind of alluded to that it they just kind of grew up because they don't have any hostility towards each other you know right they just right okay they remain That's what friends. I figured. like morpheus was so focused on finding the one i don't think he had right. time you know to to get his swerve on so yeah copy that all right uh neil rescues trinity and uh we have our segue into the third into the third and final film at least at the time but what's really funny um uh, retro leo last week was asking me about uh when was the last time we had two of the same movies the same fr- franchise released in the same year and for some reason i i use the Ramoni kenshin films they're on netflix i use that as my most recent memory but yeah. what's funny is both of these movies came out the same year <laughs> yeah yeah they did. <laughs> i just totally 
forgot about that. I was like, wow. Matrix Revolutions. All right. The human city of Zion defends itself against the massive invasion of the machines as Neo fights to end the war at another front while also opposing the rogue Agent Smith, who did a really good job. You did a really good Hugo Weaving impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, again... There's definitely parts of this film I do like. It is entertaining. I had a lot of issues with it the first time I watched it. I actually kind of hated the movie, really, to be honest. Uh, only because it, it wasn't really over. It was like, well, thank you, Neo, for stopping that Agent Smith virus. We won't kill your kind for now. And then they carried him away, and everyone's celebrating. I was like, I felt kind of unfulfilled with that. You yeah, know? nobody. No, a lot of people didn't like the ending because, you know, <clears throat> nobody wants to see the main character die, let alone two of them. I didn't mind you that. Know? It was just kind of so... Well, what's Abrupt. stopping them from coming back in an hour from well, killing everyone? It wasn't even that. It was also... He really didn't win the fight. He actually lost. It was the... It was the... The, uh, um, the Oracle. It was, like a, it was kind of like a setup, right? He gave his body over to Smith. I think so. And then they like, did I don't something. really know. Because the at the end, something? you see the... You see the oracle laying in the rain, and yeah. he let the the version of Smith that took over the oracle was the one that fought Neo. Okay. So he's kind of had like to kind of gives you the idea that he's got the oracle's powers supporting with right. him overriding her in terms okay. of control. Yeah. But yeah, the the the, the ending is it, it's not very satisfying at all. Yeah. Because to me, it didn't feel like he won. Um, right. And then I, I think he's dead. Like, we don't even really know. Right. And then he gets dragged off by the machines. They're, they're talking about peace, but they're not returning his body. Like, this motherfucker doesn't deserve a proper burial. Yeah. Now then, we're going to find out why that's the case. But at the time, nobody had a fucking clue. Yeah. And then they, they carry his body off into the sunset. And then they just cut back to the orgy on Zion. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Zion, hear me. <laughs> Can you dig it? Can you <laughs> dig it, suckers? <laughs> you see Booker T come out from the background with no shirt on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> um, Booker T. This movie to me is just Return of the Jedi. Because mm. you got three yeah. things going on at once. You got the Battle for that. Zion. The mm -hmm. spaceship chase through the tunnels, and then right. the one on one between Neo and Smith. So you got so Neo and Smith represent Luke and Vader, right? Right. Uh, Niobe and crew represent the Millennium Falcon trying to blow up the Death Star, mm -hmm. right? And then the war on Zion is what's going on on Endor between the Ewoks and the Rebels versus the Empire. Wow, that's, that's perfect, really what this man. is. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what this is. Um, wow, that's perfect. That's a the perfect only difference breakdown. is the ending in Return of the Jedi is a lot happier. Yeah, a lot but, more you know, but at least for the, the most war part, felt like it kind of ended. Yeah, you this know. one, this movie, I think it suffers from not being in the Matrix as much because that's mm. really where the cool shit happens. Okay, um, that's, I will say it makes it up for it during the war sequence is great. I love the the robotic the, the mechs. You know, yeah, I love mech that suits, man. That yeah. is awesome. And, and that was like the mech suits still hold up. You oh, know, yeah. when I was rewatching this on HBO Max, like the special effects for the mech suits. And when I saw the mech suits for the first time, two thousand three, I was like, "Yo, live action anime visually could be done." I mean, look at this shit, right? Yeah. Um, could be done. You know, as I yeah. stop there. <laughs> <laughs> could be done visually. It could yes. be done. Um. But um, that and if you think about it, this was like what five years before the first Transformers movie came out. Yes, yeah, yeah. two thousand two. Yeah, yeah. And um, the war, the the, the battle sequence in, in Zion was great, especially when all the Sentinels broke through the dome, and you could see like that was like holy shit! How are they gonna do that? Right. You know what I mean? And then the the flying sequence was pretty cool. The fight between Smith and Neo was her horrible. It is just horrible. Um, it's this a superhero is another, fight. That and that this is another there. example of rain special effects ruining a movie. This has happened plenty of times before. This is not exclusive to the Matrix. 
This happened in, uh, I feel like, in Pacific Rim. This is one of the reasons why the second movie was a little bit more uh, vibrant, although I think too vibrant. This is what happened when we got to the King of the Monsters, right? right? Right. You got all that great monster action behind a veil of rain and snow. And like maybe if they started the fight, like see, at some point they end up in the building brawling. We could have kept it in the building because they, yeah. they start off here and then they end up in a building. You maybe could have kept it there. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the reason the reason they used the rain was to hide the blemishes from the CGI. That's what mm. that's what often what rain is used for in big CGI movies. They want uh, not avoid... so much now because the CGI right. has gotten better. But if you go back and look at some some heavily intense CGI movies and notice that some of the more intense scenes that that have the CGI will have rain. Yeah, it happens gotcha. a lot. Or it's, at night. Yeah, or at night exactly, or rain at night to kind of double up. Because remember when we were talking about the fight sequence in Reloaded, where you could see like you know PS2 Neo fighting. Yeah, right in of, the day. Yeah, in the daytime. So it's in the daytime. You could see the blemishes. Right. You could still see those blemishes in this fight. But it's not as apparent because the rain gotcha. clouds it, right? So, right. Maybe maybe if this was at night, it wouldn't be as obvious. Yeah, maybe. I think again, I think this is something else that the Matrix innovated was how to conceal um, spotty CGI mm, because it, yeah. they are one. I think they're one of the first to do it, and right, right. and it does work to a certain extent. They were because mm -hmm. I think most of that fight between Neo and Agent Smith is CGI, except for when they're in the building and except for when they first clash on the street. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's Superman versus Zod, you know. Yeah, that's basically, yeah, basically. what it is. Um the 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 only the only positive out of this fight, the only positive is the music score, bro. <laughs> it's like yeah. the music score. <laughs> dude, dude, it's like <laughs> I mean it was like no, really music's bumping, great. Dude. Like the soundtrack was great, and if you wanna, if you wanna be a little bit more positive about it, if you think about it, this was the closest thing we had to seeing Superman flying around, you know, destroying buildings. I'm, I'm this telling what, you, this is yeah. what we. This is what I remember being in the theater. I'm like, dude, we could do a Superman movie now, right? And then what? Two thousand. Then, then we got Superman Returns, and they fucked it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but... <laughs> Man of Steel made up for it, though. Beautiful, great. Well, yeah, Man of yeah, Steel. yeah. Love, Man but of yeah, Steel. I mean, that's really the only positives about it, really. Um, I guess they, they, they visually they wanted to make it epic, right? They did. I think they they overdid it. They they didn't have to do the the water spheres in the. I mean, that just looks so bad. It re that reminded me. I did an effect like that in an old CG program. I I messed around with in the 90s um it started with a b the name of the program was oh man i forget the name of it but i could do that and when i saw that i'm like oh my god i've done that before right you know what i mean it's like holy shit that's not good um <laughs> i think it was uh max i, st I still have the fucking software <clears throat> but anyway yeah. um yeah it the just, movie it looked awkward yeah okay. the movie once again just you know i think being out of the matrix for most of the movie was very painful because yeah. you don't get to see the cool stuff anymore. Yeah, like when um, they were in the Matrix, it was it was cool shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Know? These guys fighting on the ceiling, look that at, was awesome. Look at look at look at Carrie Ann Moss. She did the Cynthia Rothrock kick, bro. Yeah. Look man. how much better they with more training and time. Look at that. She she look is this incredible shit, in, these, in these movies. Yeah. She's incredible. Um. Yeah. I mean, you're in the Matrix. You get that fight sequence. You get to see more of uh, you know, um. What was I going to say? Oh, the Merovingian, which was a, a treat for me, <laughs> right? And right. you get to see Monica Bellucci in a red tight leather showing cleavage for years. Yeah. And But then you take it out, and what do you get? You get a bunch of stiff boards right? talking serious, talking like robots. Yeah. Once again, everyone has sunglasses again, right? <laughs> everyone they fought in that sequence has sunglasses. Neil and Smith fought with oh, sunglasses. Oh, shit, I forgot, I forgot the one character I want to talk about. I forgot about Seraph. Oh, he Seraph was Seraph had... Had sunglasses. Now that's my boy there. Colin Chow is an amazing martial artist, and he's as he is like one of the best. If you I hope he's see... in. I hope he's in the next in this movie. I haven't seen him, but I'm hoping he pops up. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Um, 
Uh, somebody in the comments said Tiger Chan's going to be in the Matrix, so he's probably doing continuing stunt work. Probably. There are there are bringing back some people from the original series, and hopefully um, the same stunt guys and fight choreographers at least. Uh, they would be unwise not to do. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, if you want to see the best of Colin. Watch his end fight sequence against Donnie Yen in a movie called Flashpoint. You don't even have to watch the movie. Just go straight to the end. That one-on-one fight scene is one of the best fight scenes you'll ever see. That's that's how good Colin is. But what's really funny is it wasn't Colin was the second choice. They wanted Jed Li as Seraph. Really? Yeah. But he's scheduling conflicts. He couldn't do it. I think I think uh, Jed Li's. I think it would have been a, a waste. A waste. To have him yeah. In there. I yeah. think I think this guy was much better. Yeah. You know, like Jet Li, I don't know, not a waste. I shouldn't say a waste. Well, That's not a good word for Jet Yeah, because we wanted to see him more in a, in, a, in that way, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, you, right. he wouldn't have been on screen enough. Right. Uh, but, you know, this, this uh, oh, and then they, um, they did one thing that I thought was weird. They didn't have to do this because people are not dumb. They understand things happen. Okay. So the lady who played the Oracle died. Right. Before the third movie. So they obviously got a replacement. Instead of just going with the flow, they kind of someone explained that she had to change her appearance. Now, as a geek, this narrative makes zero sense because if you're a program, how you look on the outside matters nothing. It's your code that's recognizable. Right. So right. I thought considering that they are following this narrative yeah. of being in the Matrix, being code, programs representing people... Right. It didn't make sense that she had to change how she looked. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And most times, just go with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, just I go mean, with it. People understand things happen. It's the matrix. Know? The program can look any way the per person wants to look. Yeah, and you don't even have to explain <laughs> it. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You don't have to like you don't have to say I had to change my look because people are chasing me. No. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. matter if you change your appearance, your code is the same. I mean, they your really went out of the way me. with Morpheus and Trinity like looking at each other. They're like <laughs> when they saw the oracle yeah and you know <laughs> like, there's another theory i don't know if you ever heard this one but the, one of the mm. theories is that the merovision was one of the anomalies from the prior matrix oh no that's way. why he was so powerful yeah not wow. not physically but like that's why he had so much power within the, the matrix okay. okay i kind of believe that i kind of yeah, can see that that's kind of fun actually because remember when yeah. he got the cake for that chick yeah he just, yeah he just made her blast like from across oh, yeah. the room with a piece of cake like you got to be a powerful motherfucker to do that. <laughs> I wish I could send someone a cake when I was in my like, 20s. Yo, baby, have this chocolate chocolate mousse right here. Just holler at me when you're done. You know? <laughs> you know yeah, you go. Because everybody has cake. You know? <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> yeah. And then he followed up with that, too. He went to the the ladies' room and uh, yeah. had some it's fun not there. On your, it's not on your cheek, my love. Damn she didn't kiss your lips, my love. <laughs> oh, he saw his face. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> Dude, I can quote the shit out of this movie. It's crazy. Because you know what? Let me I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Despite all the flaws of the next two movies, mm -hmm. overall, I just love this trilogy. I still watch it. I still yeah. enjoy a lot of the things it has because even though the last two movies weren't great and they actually progressively got worse in some areas, there was so much innovation yeah. in this yeah. trilogy. So many things that you see Look at now. This shit. I mean, that is just incredible. I know. <laughs> I love that scene. Five years before Transformers came out. I mean, yep. that dude got cool cut shit, up, though. Dude. Oh, I know he did. He got cut up so bad. <clears throat> he but went out it, like a warrior, though. He did. He did. And um, what I was going to say was there's so many things that happen in Hollywood now that you could still credit the Matrix being the first to do it. Oh, yeah. For better or for worse. Like I said. Yeah. You got the rain, how to conceal bad CGI, but at the same time, you got different ways to shoot a scene, mm -hmm. uh, different forms of cinematography, the trick wire, the martial mm -hmm. arts training. Yep. I mean, look at John Wick. John Wick is basically like Neo, you know, in terms of his fighting skills, you know? Mm -hmm. So they they did so much for the industry, the series, and I think that's really where, where um, yeah. you got to kind of give us some credit, a, a lot of credit for that. Right, and you know how I said earlier how I, I kind of was really disappointed when I saw this in theater, right? Well, many time has passed, obviously. <laughs> a lot of years have gone by. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, man. The other day I actually was entertained by the movie. 
Because oh, I, yeah. I already knew the ending was coming. I already knew what the ending was. There yeah, was I think... no huge anticipation then, you know, now. I already know what the ending's going to be. So just watching, yeah. revisiting it again, it's still entertaining, man. I, yeah, I, well, I enjoyed it, it a lot that, more. And now. that's the important thing. It is still very entertaining. Like, I... I was blinded by my bias back then because I loved, you know, I love sci-fi. So this for me was just the biggest treat. Right. I see the flaws now, but that doesn't stop me from loving it. And it right. doesn't stop me from watching it because even though I've watched it recently, I put the Matrix trilogy on at least once or twice every couple of months. Oh, wow. And I just watch wow. it straight because I love it that much. Yeah. But yeah, I do see the flaws and, and I see the narrative flaws and, I don't mm-hmm. think the Wachowskis expected the Matrix to be as big as it was. And when something gets that big and people are demanding more, you got to deliver. Yeah. And sometimes, do you, do you know if they wanted to make it one and done or they planned I, on I believe it was supposed to be one and done. No way. Yeah. I don't think that's it was crazy. To, yeah. I don't think there was supposed to be more. Oh, wow. I think they were, they were going down the path of lore because okay. you had, you had um, I, I think shortly before Reloaded, they had a lot of right. they had content that they were doing in between to, to because they were they were kind of preparing this is why i kind of feel they weren't ready for a sequel or even a trilogy they right. were when they decided to green light those movies suddenly you got a lot of lore drop you got mm. the animatrix right right you got the Which video game right i think the video game came after though i'm not sure but i know enter the, the anim- matrix into the matrix but i know i know the animatrix came before reloaded that's where you learn the story of the ship that gets destroyed, which they right. reference in the second movie right in the beginning. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, it was supposed to be a one and done, and wow. it just became a huge hit. Um, was That's it crazy. Even, yeah. And I don't even think it cost a lot for them to make it. And I don't think it made any shattering money, the first one. It was the buzz of the movie that really kind of... Oh, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the DVD sales were... <clears throat> insanely right. profitable because right. um here we go the matrix let's see uh a budget of 63 million and they've made 406 hmm that is insanely good wow that is almost that's what, crazy that's almost like six times your investment even yeah. if you double if you double the budget because mm-hmm. they say to do that when you take into account marketing yeah it would be one one twenty six. They still made four hundred six at the box office. Wow! So, um, yeah, that's crazy, I mean, man. They made bank. Yeah, and um, yeah. Oh my God! You want to hear something crazy? I just read this. What's up? Uh, the screenplay was also the screenplay of the Matrix was also sent to Sandra Bullock because there was a version where Neo was going to be a woman, and they were considering Sandra Bullock to play the role. Wow! Thank God we dodged that bullet. That would have been terrible. <laughs> that would have been bad. Oh my God! Can you imagine Sandra know. Bullock? Uh... <laughs> oh, titties flopping. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? For oh that, God! Just that would have been. Uh, Neo. You know, if they had would've... to go that route. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. Uh... Yeah. Man, thank really God bad. for Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I think I'm going to send, say, 10 Hail Marys tonight, but instead I'm going to say 10 Keanu Reeves. Oh, my God. So, yeah, Revolutions uh, definitely enjoyed it a lot more despite a lot of flaws. Uh, I do like but, that but, war scene, though, in the dome. Oh, no, the war great. scene's great. The war scene's great, but just a just a, a, a quick uh, a quick uh, a word, 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 word of the wise out there. Filmmakers, when you want to make your evil baddie show up, uh, don't let it don't let don't let it look like a baby, please. The Get Gerber it. baby, yeah. Why why a Gerber baby face? What? Don't what? don't don't do this. <laughs> if my if if my two year old had years ago had came into my bed, looked at me and said, "Daddy, I want milk," he probably would have jumped out the fucking window. <laughs> Yeah, no, no more Gerber babies. Uh, Marvel, you know, when, when we finally see Galactus, please, no, no Gerber baby Galactus. Look, I'll take a Gerber baby Galactus over a fucking fart cloud. <laughs> All right, let's be real. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Come on now. That movie I mean, didn't happen, Rob. I'm not talking about. Happen. I know, I know. Oh, it happened. Unfortunately, I had to see it. Oh man, that's so funny. Oh man, well. 
this was definitely a blast uh, going back in time mm-hmm. and uh, revisiting uh, these three films. Had fun watching them for sure, especially the first one. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, at least, you know, we're fans of the trilogy, but at least we can call out the flaws and call out things that didn't work. Unlike some other fan bases that everything's perfect. You can't do You can't, you can't make oh, any yes. bad decisions. Oh my God. There's yeah. nothing wrong with our movies. The you know, just like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Just even, even, some, see, even some of my favorite movies of all time, I can, yeah, that was bad. Like I could admit, yeah, they could have did something else there, you know, like, you know, but you know. So are. what are your, what are you thinking for the, the new movie? So what do you think? What's your expectation? Well, Jessica Hendricks in it, and for that alone, uh, I'm giving it five stars right now. <laughs> Jessica Hendricks? Yeah, Hendrick. Yeah. Wait, she that's not gay. that. That's not she that was... big titty redhead from. No, no. Oh damn. <laughs> I know, I know. No, 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 no. She's small. No, that's but, Kristen uh, Hendricks. Okay. I've always had a professional crush on her. So now I got to look uh, her up. I don't. I need to know who you're talking about. She's got about. super, super, super short hair in this movie for some reason, and it's blue. She's the one doing all the cool shit in the trailer. Wait, man. is it Henwick or Hendrick? I think it's Hen Henwick. Henwick. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, she's isn't she from uh from Iron Fist? Yeah, she was the only oh, good yeah. thing about oh, that show. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you, dude. Oh yes. Yay! All yes. right, I'm not alone. All right. So she's the one with the blue short hair. Yeah, dude, she's doing all the cool shit. God Let's damn it, it! I didn't even recognize her. Yeah. yeah. She looks better with long hair. Not that. Well, well, yeah, but that. I'm still a fan. Not that <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but um, <laughs> not going to get into that. <laughs> Don't get my channel in trouble, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, but no, no, she love... actually she actually yeah. can act too. I like. Oh no, her she in, is. Uh, I loved her. Underwater, she was good in that. Love and Monsters. You seen Love and Monsters? No, That's not yet. A, I should, dude. It's a kaiju it's, show, with the, isn't with it? that with that t- no. <laughs> well, wait, she's wait. in that. She's in that. Loving monsters, dude. Isn't that the one that... where the guy is traveling and yeah. there's monsters in the world? You seen it? I've I want to see it. I haven't yet. It's funny, dude. Okay, it's funny. Yeah, but it's they're not really kaiju. Good. They're pretty. They look pretty big in the trailer. They're big, yeah. They're pretty, but big. not kaiju big. You mean? Uh, not like three hundred feet tall type shit. All right, don't spoil it. Shut up. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it. I can see on your face you're about to say yes, so I already know. (laughs) So now I got to go watch it. But yeah, with that title, it's a samurai guy is going to make a quick pass. But I I saw the teaser and I was like, well, this looks like fun. It's funny. It's a like a post apocalyptic show, man. I got to check it out. Yeah, she's in there. Oh man, but yeah, man. What about you? What are your What are you expecting? Uh, I just want it to be just just have you know let the plot be simple. Let's have a simple plot. Let things make sense. <laughs> I'm and... expecting a fumble at the goal line. Oh damn! Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm. I, the first Hopefully trailer. Hopefully, the action's I was, good. The action, I think, is going to be fine. The first okay. trailer had me amped up. I saw the second trailer, and I saw some things that concerned me. Okay. Do you remember what it was? Yes, <laughs> I haven't forgotten okay. at all. It's it's in my brain. But what is it? Um, I, my biggest concern is I think they're going to swap the story to trinity being the one now i have a problem with that and i don't have a problem with that why would they do that though i don't know but based on the second trailer the well she's like oh she like yells or something like that and it wasn't just that there were little hints there that kind of tell because neo to me it looks like they they get neo woken up first and then there's a big hunt for trinity and they're trying to prevent that from happening but why if she wasn't so important and how is she alive? Remember, yeah. That's the big died. question. So yeah. I have, now look, I don't have a problem with it and I have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it because if you look at all the movies, Trinity has earned a right to have power. Oh yeah. To me, oh, yeah. she does. I don't have a problem with mm-hmm. that. Yeah. My problem is if she replaces Neo, if she replaces Neo, because then that just undercuts Everything about what they fought for in the first three movies. That just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Now, my hope is, okay. a, is a compromise. Okay. My compromise is because of their infectious love and finding their way back, they are right. both the one. That is what that to me, I would accept that. If they're okay. both have similar powers, or if Trinity has powers like Neo, but not to that extent. Like okay, you know what I mean? So 
as long as he's not as long as he's not replaced. I don't want him to be replaced. I, I don't I don't think Trinity is undeserving. You know, I'm a big advocate, you know, when we talk because you know, there's always this debate about women and Mary Sue's and all that. Yeah. I wouldn't see Trinity as a Mary Sue. I mean, come on, man. She died twice no. for this guy. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. she's earned the right to have powers. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I just yeah. don't want her replacing Neo. I, I, I them being together and being powerful, completely cool with that. It even makes sense narratively. Like, they're the one. Yeah, they're the one couple. The, I don't know. The they're two. Like, <laughs> they're like Brangelina, you know what I mean? Of the Matrix. They're like, they're like, you know. Or they do some Dragon Ball Z fusion fusion shit, you know, yeah, they and combine. Becomes, and then the director know. comes in and she's the one, you know, because they be, you know, if they fuse, they'll have, you know, become a he she. Yeah. All right, let me not do that's not nice. That's not nice. <laughs> you can get my channel in trouble, man. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. We're just good. We're just having fun. Yeah. Um, but um ah, yeah, that would be really dumb. I'm just trying to think of what that's the logic about that though. Like why? Why would they do that? Well, I know why, but I'm not going to say <laughs> why. You know what I mean? I'll tell you why on my channel. On your channel. Where I don't give a shit. You know I mean? Okay, I, I have an inkling. We don't have to go on it. Yeah, I yeah. have an inkling. Um, All right. All right, I man. Think, I don't think it's bad for the narrative overall. As long as they don't replace Neo, then I'm fine with it. Right, right, right. Well, hopefully they don't do... Hopefully they don't do any of the iconic characters bad. Like young Morpheus, hopefully they don't make him garbage. You know? Yeah. Like we want to see, you know, even Trinity. Let's let us not do her bad either. Like, you know. Well, I already don't have good feelings about Young Morpheus either. No, no, no. I'm cool with that. I don't have okay. good feelings about Agent Smith. Oh, the, is this supposed to be a young Hugo Weaving? Is that you what can't, that guy? I don't know, man, but you can't bring in a dude that looks like Adam Lambert to pray fucking agent smith okay the guy looks like adam i know it's not but he looks like him yeah yeah, yeah. you know you go from hugo weaving looking evil and to some right. guy that looks like he's part of the a part of nsync <laughs> to play fucking i mean come on man i'm not sold on that i'm hoping his acting sells me but right now yeah in, you know first looks the guy right. looks like he just was singing bye 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 <laughs> and now he's trying to say mr anderson i i i'm not feeling you're like right no now. yeah i'm not feeling like, it so. no movie we'll see no. Gotta be fair. Yeah. Gotta be fair. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Hopefully this new movie's uh, good. If it's not, you will hear from me and Rob for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, actually, we should do a review We should. Together. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do it, yeah. Like a spoiler talk? Yeah, we'll do a full spoiler talk, you yeah. know, whenever you want to do it. Yeah, yeah. You Are know? you going to review it on your channel as well? I'm going to review it, but I and definitely want to have... spoiler talk here. Yeah, we can yeah, that. we can we can have an extended discussion and see. If hopefully, yeah. you know, maybe get Leo if he watches it, if he's available to come back. Oh, he's you knowing that guy, he's gonna see it for sure. Yeah, yeah, so. but yeah, man, always an a, a, a pleasure, a privilege, an honor having my brother from another mother, Rob, hanging out with Samurai Guy on the channel. Always great having you here, my friend. And y'all know what you need to do. Those of you who are watching who are not subscribed yet. Y'all know what you need to do. Y'all need to go down in the link below, son, and subscribe to Entertainment Talk Nation, baby. That's what y'all need to do. Entertainment abounds over there. Hilariosity. <laughs> like yep. a roast, movie reviews, yeah. pop culture topics. Everything is over there. Or sometimes just so. general discussions and yeah. a lot of a lot of insults flying in chat. <laughs> If, if you want to see, if you're new here, yeah. if you're new here, you can subscribe to the old samurai guy as well. Of course, I got a lot of cool stuff coming to the channel very soon. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Keep watching movies, and we we'll see you guys on the next one. Take a good one. Peace. Mm -mm 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 -mm